Our mission at the Centre for Menstrual Cycle and Ovulation Research is to create and share a scientific, holistic body of knowledge focused on normal patterns of hormones in the population and changes in women's menstrual cycles and ovulatory characteristics across the life cycle. It's a very unusual centre because it's mostly virtual. We have a few staff here, we're doing some ongoing research, but a lot of what we do is making available information online through the SEMCOR website. And it's the only uh, research centre in the world, as far as I know, that's focused on not only menstrual cycles, but ovulation. We're really excited about the relaunch and redesign of our SEMCOR website. We have between three and four and a half thousand page views per day and 90,000 visitors per month from 187 different countries. So we're excited and pumped that we are reaching our target audience and that women from all age groups all across the world are finding the information that they need about menstrual cycles and ovulation. We were doing an observational study in a group of 66 healthy women. We started out with women that had perfectly normal menstrual cycles. They had to have normal cycle length, but they also had to ovulate and make progesterone in a normal amount. And then we simply observed them over time and measured bone density at the beginning and the end. What we found was that some of these women, for unexplained reasons, were losing a lot of bone. Given that estrogen is so important for women's bone health, that was mysterious. And then we realized that what was different about those who were losing bone is that they were making progesterone but not enough or they were making none at all a few cycles during that year. A normal menstrual cycle, like bone remodeling, has two phases. The initial phase is the follicular phase, and that's where we have increasing levels of estrogen during that time. In the luteal phase, you have an increase in progesterone, and the first half of the menstrual cycle, you have a prevention of bone loss. In the second half of the menstrual cycle, when you have an increase in progesterone, that's when we see bone formation and this is a cyclical event just like bone remodeling that's regulated by both bone resorption and bone formation. We have found six original paper that have documented these results in more than 400 samples and in more than three countries in three continents that have confirmed the original data. So those six studies included more than 400 women who are healthy and have regular menstrual cycles, but they do commonly have ovulatory disturbances. And in those women with more frequent ovulatory disturbances, they have a significant uh, tendency towards uh, a bone loss of approximately 1% per year. Between 1995 and 1997, we randomly recruited 9,423 men and women in nine centers in seven provinces and one of the centers in Vancouver, a coordinating center is in Montreal. We also recruited between 2005 and 2007 young cohort ages 16 to 24, 1,001 men and women. Recently, um, our center took the lead to compare uh, bone changes between users and non-users of combined hormonal contraceptives in teen and young women ages 16 to 24. To our knowledge, there is no population-based data of CHC or combined hormonal contraceptives and bone changes in young women. So our preliminary data in 323 women with uh, two-year bone change confirmed previous studies uh, that showing that CHC or combined hormonal contraceptives prevent uh, teenagers to achieve their optimal bone mass, uh, peak bone mass, uh, meaning that those taking the pills are gaining less bone than those not taking the pills. And according to our two-year data, uh, 76 percent of participants use the pill. It is unclear why uh, the teenagers in the CAMO study failed to gain as much bone um, as those teenagers who weren't on the pill. We discovered that mysterious finding that some healthy women with regular normal length cycles were losing bone. And when we realized that the difference between those losing and not losing was their exposure to progesterone, their menstrual cycle ovulation characteristics, 
Then we said, what if we gave back progestin, well in that case progestin, something that acts like progesterone through the bone formation system, what would happen if we gave that to women whose cycles were abnormal? We gave sort of a luteal phase or a progesterone phase of the cycle replacement, 10 days a month of this progestin to a group of women with, that were otherwise healthy but had abnormal cycles. And we found a remarkable gain in bone, two to three percent gain in those who got the cyclic progestin versus a two percent loss in those who got the placebo. And calcium helped, so there was about a one percent greater gain on the progestin when cal extra calcium was on board and the calcium alone prevented bone loss? The basic answer is yes, progesterone is important for building bone in women. The evidence comes from small randomized control trials showing that progesterone alone is an effective agent to promote bone gain in women. There's also a recent meta-analysis that we've done that will be published soon that shows that estrogen plus progesterone has a 0.5% greater bone gain than estrogen alone. And so there remains a lot more work to be done. These are new findings, but progesterone is a very safe agent to use in women. And the early evidence suggests that there's a clear effect on bone gain when using this agent. The most important things that I've learned in my career and research is that progesterone is women's bone forming hormone. We learned early that women could have regular menstrual cycles and be losing bone and discovered that it was because they had less progesterone than normal. They had ovulatory disturbances that were silent and we also have learned that we can treat with cyclic progesterone for half of the cycle and rebuild that bone so that they will not have fractures later.